today is Sunday, August 19th, 2018. Uh, vlog number uh, 230. It's gonna to be that time of year again where I leave work in the morning at my normal you know, leaving time. The sun is gonna come up later and later. So these little morning vlogs in my car and then I drive home. on the subject. So it's not weird. Uh, I saw a mile 22 the other day. Uh, I might do like a quick review, but I'll do a short little review here. Um, it's been a few days since I've watched it, so my memory's a little hazy. So, mile 22 starts Mark Wahlberg, and his name, I can't even remember his name to really, to, for the life of me, um, but the main guy from the Raid series. If you watched the Raid, the Raid 2, you know what I'm talking about. He's the main guy, and he's, he's a badass. You know, he's an awesome, awesome martial artist. And, um, you know, this is, as far as my knowledge goes, his Western movie debut. Uh, Hollywood debut, kind of. Um, it has a couple other actors in it. Apparently this is a woman from The Walking Dead. I don't know her name. Um, and it has, uh, you know, a couple other side characters. But one of the side characters is uh, played by Ronda Rousey. It's interesting. Um, so she's getting more and more, more and more to movies. I think like the first movie that she was in was uh, one of the Expendables movies. Um, so, Mile 22, it's based around this, this special team that they pretty much do the impossible, like, you know, it's not like Mission Impossible type thing, no, but they're, they're very covert, pretty much, um, whatever they do, the government denies them, in fact, like, one sequence of the movie, um, I guess they do this before all their ops, is that they sign away, um, their citizenship. I guess they can act if they, they're successful, but I guess if they're caught or, you know, killed, the government can deny their existence, I'm assuming. Um, but the whole thing with this movie, the premise, is that um, this guy who plays in the raid, he, um, he needs to get be escorted um, from, like, the, I think it's the uh, U.S. Embassy in some Asian country. They don't mention what Asian country it is, which is interesting. Um, and they did, what they did that to kind of, I think they mentioned, like, the city, so, but they didn't mention the, the country. So I, I have to look that up, but I think they did it maybe to kind of not offend anybody, because one other thing about this movie, and I've noticed this a lot about um, a lot of Hollywood movies, is that one of the production houses of the movie is the H Brothers. Uh, I think I spoke about this before. The H Brothers, um, they're a big Chinese movie company. And there's a lot of crossover right now between China and America when it comes to big budget Hollywood movies. It's, so they're kind of crossing over and so you're starting to see like a lot of Asian actors and you know a lot of Asian-led movies which is a good thing. I don't, I'm not, nothing bad about it, but it's just interesting that you see that um, a lot more movies are not done by American um, or even British movie studios. They're done, you know, a lot or in part by Chinese movie studios. I wonder if they're the same. Uh, if one of these Chinese movie studios did this. Filthy Rich Asians movie. But that movie just looks racist as hell. Uh, anyway. I'm, 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 I got distracted. So. He has to be escorted out of the city because he knows something. But he's supposedly a um, an agent that this country wants because, because he knows something and apparently like um, if he lets his knowledge out, it might bring down that government, which they never really explained in this movie. They, you know, no 
real spoilers. I mean, spo- who cares about this point? No one really gets to see this movie, anyways. Um, they never really explain this in the movie. Of okay, yeah, if he leaves the six, how, how's a government gonna know? How's a government gonna fall? Um, but because basically the secret is there was something that happened that led to um, this. Radioactive powder that it's like a uranium type of powder. I forget. I think they call it cesium. Um, a lot of it went missing, and um, they recover a lot of it, but there's a lot of it that's gone. But this guy knows where it is. I mean, he's like they, they're trusting him that he knows where it is, and they put you know a big old lie detector on it and stuff. Um, and he put the knowledge of where they are on a hard drive. And the hard drive is especially encoded. And they're all like, oh, the hard drive, you know, the encoding on it is gonna wipe the drive in like eight hours. We have to get him out. You know, basically, he's basically, he's holding them hostage to this data so they can get him out of the, of the town, get on, on a plane, and give him asylum to America. That's the whole premise of the movie. Uh, so of course this elite team has to get him out. And all the while in the movie, you also see this woman and a couple of soldiers on like a Russian plane. And the plane is like a spy plane that has a big radar dish on top. And you can see they're kind of like working on something. I'm not going to mention, you know, what it is, but um, you're, and you're never really given a, a direct hint. You know, for the majority of the movie, what exactly they're doing and why, you kind of give it get a little bit it's like okay, they're they are up to something, um, but they're they're very very far in the background until the very end of the movie. Um, I will say though, Mark Wahlberg, I like him as an actor. He's a pretty cool actor. He plays some goofy roles sometimes. I loved him in. He's, he's good in, like, comedy movies, because he's a very kind of loud Boston guy. Um, you know, I loved him in uh, uh, Ted. I loved him in uh, The Other Guys. But whenever he's in, like, a serious movie, uh, there's, I guess, a couple of movies where he can be serious. But in this one, you can tell he's supposed to be a very serious character, but yet he has eccentricities. Like he's supposed to, they tell you like right away in, in total, you know, exhibition heavy like intro that, you know, he's extremely intelligent, you know, he has this like ever since birth, like, you know, he's kind of like a, like a super mind, you know, and, um, you know, but yet he has a, another issue with his mind where he has this like rage factor, like, like, you know, lose his focus and the way he gets his focus back is with pain. So when he does the movie, he has a rubber band around his hand, he snaps it, he snaps it on his wrist, he gets a little bit of pain, gets him back. So I guess he's supposed to be eccentric. But in the movie, he's eccentric to the point of comedic, where he looks like he's Mark Wahlberg playing a character of Mark Wahlberg. You know what I mean? So you're a dog, right? What's that like? That's cool. So how are your mother, okay? And that's that's the type of character he's playing. He's playing an Andy Sandberg, Mark Wahlberg, but he's Mark Wahlberg. So it kind of throws you off, you know. And that's just, I mean, that's the the, the, the you know parts where he has dialogue and he's acting and he's supposed to be talking. That's fun. That's it. Kind of throws you off, but it's okay because when it gets down to the action, uh, he's okay with it because you know he, he doesn't. He's not really. Don't talk. He's just doing his actions. He's shooting guys, and that's fine. Speaking of action, though, this guy from the Raid. He's obviously a very good martial artist, and when you look at movies like the Raid, um, you know they're very they're the anti-born movies, the Born Identity movies. Is remember the Born Identity movies? Those were all shaky cam all the time all you know cutting around where your your action is and just kind of like you know to 
be fair, the first Bourne movie wasn't as bad as like some of the later ones. It, it got progressively worse as each time they, they try to make a new Bourne movie. And that's a pink sunset or sunrise, I say. Uh, and in a lot of action movies, they do this because they think whoever's making the movies thinks it looks good because what they can do is like if they're having a hand to hand fight scene, the camera could be like way close up. They could shake it, and a person can look do an action, and you don't have to see what the hell he's doing. But you know, with the sound and like a little bit of resulting action afterwards, you assume that somebody got hit. You you, you kind of like take in the face value that all right, he just this is a badass martial arts and they get punched and kicked and stuff. So they have like you know, in the past when they show martial arts, sometimes you see like whiff and like it goes like obviously like six inches in front of their face and obviously not hitting somebody, you know, and the camera's not moving, so you see it clear as day that, and that was movies past. But if you have a good choreographer nowadays, you could do good action movies without having to try to hide it. And that's what the movies like The Raid did well. And not only that, but they had very few camera cuts in their fight scenes. They would show you from an angle um, a scene, and they only cut when it's necessary. They only change the camera angle when it's necessary. Um, you know, it's like you're in a hallway and fighting, and the fight goes around a little corner. You've got to change the camera angle. Um, you know, they, they would cut to change, you know, to get a little more different perspective. Yes, but for the most part, you knew what was going on. You knew every punch and kick, every grapple. You know. And it all looked like it was fucking painful. It all looked like they did a really good job with the action. It looked like a real goddamn fight. Um, now, in this movie, Mile 22, they got the guy from the raid. And obviously, they probably got some other you know, martial artists to be in some hand-to-hand -hand fights. Uh, he does a couple of gun shoot shoot shootouts as well. Um, but he does, he's in a couple of martial art fights. And you could tell they were, they were kind of going for that type of gritty... Um, fight like the raid, but they did it in a born identity way, where they, sh you know, did shaky cam, they did super close up, where you didn't really, and like super quick camera cuts, where you didn't see the action. For the most part, there's a couple parts where you did see it, um, but I was all really you gotta do that. I'm I'm assuming that the, it's just. The direction of the movie, like the director, he didn't, he wanted to go for that type of style, but he didn't know exactly how. But he kind of trusted his actors to do what they were doing, but he didn't trust his cameramen to be able to capture it, I guess. And his editors to be able to edit it, you know, in a way that looked believable. I'm, that's what I'm assuming. I mean, he was, there was like, Two major like um, hand-to-hand -hand fights in this in this movie. Um, two and a half, I would say, and both were. I mean, they, they were they were, they were decent. It is kind of a little disappointing to me that they, they went for that you know type of shaky cam type of thing. Oh well. Um, and for the most part, the movie, you know, yeah, they're they're trying to escort this guy through the city, and. getting waves and waves of people. You know, bad guys are coming at him. Uh, and the bad guys in this movie, of course, are kind of like that country's government. Because the government is, you know, that country is trying to get this guy. Uh, but, I mean, I get, I know it's, it's a movie. And if they did it a different way, you know, it wouldn't, the movie wouldn't have been made, you know, it would have been different. Um, from the very outset, and they start driving away with the guy, I'm all like, why are they being stupid about this to escort this guy away? Because they put him in the car, in a car, in a big SUV, plans a day, and they drive away, and like, you know, they have one car up front, and one car in the back, and, you know, just two cars. Like, really? That's it? He's like a super high profile guy where, if he doesn't find, if you, if you don't get him out, um, you know, the information's gonna be lost, and there's probably gonna be nuclear explosions in, in major cities. 
If they give him two cars with like five people to cover him. First of all, like I, what I would do is like at least put a, like a bag over his head so you don't know who he is. Get another set of cars with a couple more people with another guy that has similar build put a bag over his head, set him off in two different directions. That will at least put people off the trail, right? At least do that multiple times. Have three cars like that. I don't know. Uh, you know, maybe they have limited resources. I don't know. Uh, but I don't know. This is a stupid way of going about it. Other than that, it was okay movie. Um, definitely not the greatest movie. I'm, I'm not gonna be buying it on Blu-ray, that's for sure. But it, it was enjoyable. It's a popcorn flick. Um, again, Mark Wahlberg is a, it's a weird role for him. I mean, not 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 weird role. It's just the way he played it was weird. Um, and some of the other characters, there's a female character who's I guess you know she she works on the team. And she's obviously very close with um, you know Mark Wahlberg's character. You know, in terms of not that close, like romantic, but they've worked together for a long time. They suddenly know each other. So when they have conversations, they don't. Um, really give like the exposition of what they're talking about and but you can tell it's like okay yeah this woman she's a mother and she you know her job she can't be home and she she misses her daughter and stuff uh, but like the way they like you know, like talk about it they talk about it in a very like, like this is not a normal human conversation that they're having like people don't talk like this you know what I mean it, it, it was it was very weird like there's one conversation in particular that I'm all like the fuck are they talking about because <laughs> like Mark Wahlberg and the woman like she just got off the phone with like I guess her ex-husband because her ex-husband has a new wife and stuff and um, they're like video chatting and like after she got off the call with him he, he, she was like pissed off and Mark Wahlberg is talking to her and the way they were talking I wish I could remember some of the dialogue but that was all it was so fucking weird. You go see this movie and you see this scene, you'll know what I'm talking about. It was so fucking weird. Um, it just what didn't seem human as a realistic conversation that people have. <laughs> so I think we had to really explain it. Anyway, again, decent movie. Go see it if you want. Wait for the Dollar Theater, actually. Um, wait for Redbox. Red, wait for Netflix. I don't care. But, um, that's all you really need to know. That's about it for today. I will talk to y'all later. Everybody have a good day. I love you.